Our guests to discuss the federal government's mining tax and the West Australian government's increase in mining royalties. We're joined now from our Parliament House studio by the Shadow Assistant Treasurer and Opposition Spokesman on Financial Services and Superannuation, West Australian Senator, Senator Matthias Cormann. Thanks for joining us. Good to be here, Tony. Um, does the West Australian government's decision to raise an extra $2 billion from mining taxes create a sovereign risk to the state's booming mining sector? Uh, Tony, we've got to remember how this whole thing started. This all started with the Henry Tax Review, which was supposed to deliver a root and branch reform of our tax system and a fair, simpler and fairer taxes. And, of course, what we've ended up with uh, is a multi-billion dollar new tax, uh, which is manifestly more complex and, we would argue, less fair. Yes, but hang uh, on, hang on for one second. You can talk about that in a minute. But I just asked you about the West Australian government's tax, the $2 billion royalty tax. I mean, is that going to create a sovereign risk? for the mining well, sector. I mean You've got to look at this in context of what the government is trying to do with its mining tax at the national level. And, of course, uh, Wayne Swan uh, made a mess of the RSPT first up by not consulting with anyone. Kevin Rudd lost his job. Uh, Wayne Swan got promoted. Then Julia Gillard comes in and they negotiated a deal, an exclusive deal in secret uh, with the three biggest mining companies, excluding their competitors and excluding all state and territory governments from the process. Uh, and, and, of course, as part of the deal, uh, they promised to those three big mining companies to to credit all state and territory royalties against any uh, mining tax Yes, but just take liability. one step well, back. Well, you can talk about that in a moment, but we're actually not talking about yeah. that right now. We're talking about the West yeah. Australian government's yeah. decision to impose a $2 billion mining tax. And I'm asking yeah. you if that $2 billion West Australian tax is going to pose some sort of problem for the mining industry. Well, the $2 billion uh, uh, royalty increase in Western Australia poses a problem to Wayne Swan's uh, budget bottom line. It will, it will essentially put another $2 billion black hole into his budget. Well, now, no, apparently, that, apparently not, because it'll just be discounted off the GST, which otherwise the West Australians would get. And, and, and well, Colin Barnett has furthermore said that he actually expected that to happen. Well, well, Tony, Tony uh, any changes in GST sharing arrangements, if uh, Wayne Swan indeed goes ahead with that threat, uh, will not increase uh, federal government revenue and will not do anything about Wayne Swan's uh, black hole. But the point, the important but, point but it here won't be, is... It won't be a black hole, will it, if he takes $2 billion out of the revenue that was going to be given well, to Western Australia? Well, and redistributes it among other states. And well, redistributes it among other states. Well, he might just put it back into the pile, that's, the, the hole that's left by the $2 billion well, well, uh, for the royalties. I'd be interested... That seemed, I'd to be be interested. The, seemed to be the theory. And in fact, as I just said before, Colin Barnett said he accepted that is going to happen. Well, I don't think that Colin Barnett has said that he accepted that the federal government was going to take $2 billion out of royalties from Western Australia and put it into its budget bottom line. But let me just make the point here. The signatures on the deal with the mining companies are Julia Gillard's, Wayne Swan's and Martin Ferguson's on behalf of the Australian government, the CEOs of BHP, Rio and Extrada on behalf of the three big mining companies. Colin Barnett's signature is not on the deal. Anna Bly's signature is not on the deal. And, and, of course, uh, Mike, Mike Ryan's signature is not on the deal. Not a single state and territory government's uh, signature is on the deal. And, and that is the fundamental problem. Uh, Wayne Swan made a promise. He committed the Commonwealth uh, to credit all state and territory royalties against the mining tax li uh, liability without actually uh, going through due diligence as to what would happen uh, with the state and territory okay, government okay, royalties. Okay, you can, I, can, I, can I just go to the principle here? Because I thought the Liberal Party's position was pretty clear on this that any new big tax on the mining industry in Western Australia was going to cost jobs and investment and pose a sovereign risk. Now a Liberal Premier is doing precisely that in Western Australia. Does he believe... And do you believe it'll pose a sovereign risk, that tax? What, 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 what Colin Barnett has done in Western Australia is remove a concession which applied to iron ore fines, a royalty concession, uh, to bring the uh, royalty right for uh, iron ore fines to the same level as that which applies to iron ore lumps. Yes, he's, he's, he's increasing the tax. He's increasing well, the well, tax he, he's, he's going to raise $2 billion. Well, ro royalties, in fact, uh, are the price that state governments charge uh, as the, uh, val on the value of the resource, the non-renewable resource which is extracted by mining companies. It, it is the price for the value of the resource. And, of course, uh, that, mu so that you're not, money... So you're not arguing, are you, that royalties well, are not a tax? 
Well, what, what I'm arguing is that as a result of the deal that Wine Swan has entered into with those three mining companies, uh, that of course uh, th those $2 billion will come straight out of uh, Wine Swan's budget bottom line. Uh, th they, BHP Billiton and Rio Tinto are not too worried about this. Uh, Wine Swan is worried about it because this is, of course, a black hole to his budget. Okay. All because he didn't dot his I's and he didn't cross his T's when he did the deal. All right. Well, we, we, we talked about that a moment ago, so I won't go back over that again. But is the coalition still claiming that the Treasurer Wayne Swan has lied about whether he knew before the budget about West Australian plans to increase this tax? Well, the West Australian state government clearly communicated with uh, the Treasurer uh, about uh, their plans to uh, remove the concession uh, on royalty rights for iron ore fines. I mean, there, is, there are letters, there are phone calls, there were meetings. I mean, what, what we're saying to Wayne Swan is that he, he's got to come clean. He's got to tell the truth. He's got to tell us uh, what promises he's made, what assurances he's given, uh, what, what has he been saying to the state government in Western Australia and indeed other state okay, governments around so I've got, Australia. I've got to, I, I see your point, but... Uh, are you actually saying that there's been a secret deal between the Liberal Premier of Western Australia and the Treasurer of Australia? A secret deal? Well, well no, what, what I'm saying is there clearly have been a lot of uh, discussions. There's a lot of confusion. This whole thing is in a mess. Uh, Wayne Swan has made a mess of the policy and of the process. And the reason for that mess is because he didn't properly consult with state and territory governments before oh, no, pressing ahead sorry, you're, with you're, the mining tax deal. All right, you're shifting, well, you're shifting back to your other position. We're, we're actually talking well, about whether or not Wayne Swan has, as the coalition has put it, lied about knowledge of the, the Western Australian government's uh, uh, plans to reimpose or impose this new tax. Now, uh, I've got to tell well, you, the well, Treasurer's Office has tonight released a document uh, showing how Colin Barnett said publicly on eight separate occasions that he wasn't going to increase this tax. That's eight separate occasions in eight, eight months, the last one uh, as, as late as the 23rd of February this year when he told 6PR, your radio station, I think, we don't have any plans to increase royalties in Western Australia. Well, I mean, I guess Wayne Swan should tell us what was discussed in, in the meeting he had with the Premier on the 19th of April 2010. Uh, there's, there clearly is a letter from the uh, WA under Treasurer uh, to the then Secretary of the Treasury, Ken Henry, which, which very clearly puts on the table plans uh, to remove the concessions on uh, royalty rights for iron ore fines to take it up to 7.5%, uh, the same as that, uh, that which applies to iron ore uh, lumps, which is exactly what the government, of course, did in Western Australia. But, but, are, last, you, but are you saying, week. are you actually actually saying that the Premier of Western Australia lied on eight separate occasions, knowing that he was actually going to increase this tax and saying consistently eight times that he wasn't going to do it? I, I'm going to let the Premier of Western Australia talk for himself. But, well, but he the did point on eight here, separate occasions. Well, well, well and, and, and of course, the uh, co government of Western Australia has made it very clear uh, to the federal, federal government on a, on a number of occasions uh, that they were planning over time, in a phased approach, uh, to remove the uh, royalty concessions as they apply to iron ore uh, fines. And, of course, that's exactly what they've done last week. But the point here, though, is if, if Wayne Swan was really uh, concerned about his budget bottom line, before he signed on a dotted line uh, to to, uh, make a promise to uh, BHP Rio and Extrada that he would credit all state and territory royalties. Surely uh, he should have sought assurances. He should have, if he really wanted to protect the budget bottom line, he should have actually tried to seek agreement from state and territory governments that they would not increase their royalties because, of course, this budget is exposed from uh, royalty increases even moving forward. Well, what, what well, about unless, Queensland? Unless, what about we, Queensland in June or said, next year? Unless, or, or New said, South Wales? unless, as we said earlier... Uh, West Australia is penalised, as evidently Colin Barnett expects to be, and has that money taken out of the West Australian GST handout. Well, I, I don't think that uh, Colin Barnett expects to be penalised. And, and look, I mean, Wayne Swan well, has made a mess of the policy and the process. And, 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 and of course, last week, both the Prime Minister and the Treasurer came out and, and declared a tax war against the people of Western Australia. And I guess the Prime, Minister, the Prime Minister and the Treasurer will have to clarify at some point uh, what sort of uh, penalties they will be imposing on Western Australia. There has been a lot of bluster, but ultimately I'd be very interested to hear what the Treasurer has got to say about uh, infrastructure spending and 
and what would happen with GST sharing arrangements moving forward. Because, of course, there is, quite separately to all of this, a, a review instituted by the Prime Minister about the GST sharing arrangements. So, I mean, there's a lot of confusion here. Yeah, and, okay. and it is time for Wayne Swan to come clean and tell the truth about all of his involvement well, in this. It certainly will be interesting to find out the details of those penalties. I agree with that. Five of Australia's most senior business leaders, including Don Argus, have refused to appear before your Senate inquiry into the mining tax. Um, why do you think they're avoiding your scrutiny? Well, look, I'm, I'm disappointed that uh, they didn't, that in particular that the chairman, Don Argus, didn't make himself available. I mean, essentially, I mean, Senate processes, a Senate inquiry a process 101, uh, you invite everyone and anyone that can contribute to a public policy discussion and that can shed light on, on, you know, the ins and outs of implications of a particular policy. And in that context, of course, uh, you know, Don Argus, as the chair of the policy transition group, uh, played a central role uh, in helping the government implement what is, uh, you know, argue, well, clearly a, a very controversial policy. So, so, we, so we were, we're, we're nearly out of time, so I'm just going to ask you this, other, this quick question about why you think that is. I mean, do you think there's some kind of conspiracy going on here? Well, well I, I can't, you, I I mean, can't you seem to imply You've implied there's a sort of no. conspiracy going on between the West Australians and the Treasurer. Uh, I, I, I'm wondering I whether you implied, think that about I, I, these business people I, I, and the Tony, government Tony, well. I would reject that there was a conspiracy. What I'm saying is that Wayne Swan should come clean on the promises he's made. But uh, as Secret far as, promises, as Don Argus is... Well, well, I mean, no, I didn't say secret promises. I said I think that uh, w what I said is that Wayne Swan should come clean on the promises that he's made. And, and as far as Don Argus is concerned, look, he'll, he'll, he'll be able to explain himself as to why, uh, why he didn't attend. Personally, I, I'm disappointed. I think he could have added value to the process, and, and, and I would have liked to hear his evidence. Matthias Corwin, we're out of time. We thank you very much for coming in to join us tonight. See you again. Good to talk to you.